And in that same conversation, the Lord himself gave us a new topic. So today we'll be talking about the mind of Christ in Easter, but with um, focus on introduction to the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? The scripture that um, comes to mind or that came to mind when this topic came up is in the book of John. And I know we are familiar. John 14, reading from verse 16, I believe, onwards. If you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you yet a little while and the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me because I live. You also will live. In that day, you know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Sisters, we read this and sometimes it becomes a, a, a lot of things that we've read and we, we kind of struggle, for want of a better word, to put meaning to it and to bring it to our everyday lives. But the Lord is good. Today, he's blessed us with the presence of his own servant, Pastor Norbert. Pastor Norbert Ankuma is a pastor and he's also an insurance professional. And he is a pastor at Agape New Testament Church, but he's a non-vocational pastor. And how I understand that means he's not a full-time pastor over there, but he's with Agape Church. And he's a thriving church. Um, Agape is a thriving church under the leadership of Reverend Whitcomb. And we know that our own dear Pastor Adline is also um, a pastor in Agape and is also under the leadership of Reverend Whitcomb. May God bless him. We thank God for his life. Pastor Norbert works with the Social Security and National Insurance Trust as the assistant manager in insurance. He also has economic interests. He's a part-time lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School and Wisconsin International University College. So today, spiritually and physically, we are being taught the Lord is good. Pastor Norbert is not yet married and does not yet have kids. His strongest conviction is that the word of God works. Sisters, tonight that is who the Lord has given us to bless us and to explain to us into detail this scripture that we read. This thing that we've read, what does it mean? I mean, the Holy Spirit, who is he? So he would be walking with us um, on that journey tonight. So Pastor Norbert, if you can kindly put on your video. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> so that our... Evo producer can spotlight you. Oh, it's such a joy to see your video. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. That's a problem. You know Thank here, you. Yeah. Closer Walk Women, you are, you are family. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So those who have been seen Pastor Norbert, this is our Pastor Norbert. Today he's on video. <laughs> Thank God for the session. Thank so you. Pastor Norbert, before we start our conversation itself, mm -hmm. tell us, how did Pastor Norbert, I mean, you are a professional insurance person. You yeah. have a love for teaching. It's very obvious when you teach the word. Yeah. But you are a pastor. So how yes. did you end up being a pastor? We want to start with that. <laughs> okay, so um, from an early age, I should say, I, I, I've always had an interest to do something in the house of God. Like, so in my JSS days, that is when I gave my life to Christ, actually, uh, from classic to JSS one. And so I, I served as a student chaplain at JHS. Then in the secondary school, I also served as a student chaplain. So um, that has been my line. And then we had a, uh, a youth fellowship that was not non-denominational. And our focus mainly was evangelism prayer. So <laughs> from there, we were nurtured into some of these things, believing in God and um, trusting God, serving God with a with a strong focus on prayer. That, that is how we're brought up. And then 
Um, after secondary school, I came to Accra, started my university education, and then I joined Agape. So along the line, the interest has always been there. Then an opportunity came for um, those of us who want to still be someone in the corporate world working and still serving in the ministry. So um, a training was organized in church um, called the Equip to equip people for lay ministry. So my belief has been always that whatever opportunity there is to serve in the house of God, um, in as much as um, it is within my power, I want to avail myself. And that I don't want to, in my own way, put blocks that pre prevents me from serving God. So when this opportunity came, I signed up for it. And then we went through the training. After that, seven for a couple of years, the church offers that opportunity to be ordained as pastors in the church. And um, I believe that God was leading me in that direction. So I gladly accepted the challenge. And so that is how the journey has been um, and, and where we are now. We are trusting God for his plan and his will to continue to unfold as we uh, move along to whatever uh, uh, um, dimension of the ministry the Lord will take us to. But for now, this is where we are and how far the Lord has brought us. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Auntie from Poma, please. I think you are muted. Yes, I think. Uh, oh, I I, I, I was muted. Mm. Thank you, Sister. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, Sister Jewel, I think you are host now. So just so you know, just just for information, so you know. All right, Pastor Nobel. Thank you for for that uh, um intro. Uh, it's it's nice to to hear that. This, this journey started a while mm. ago. So let's get straight into today's topic because I know the Lord has mm. a lot for us to, to take home. Just a moment, who is the Holy Spirit? I've learned that he's a person. Mm -hmm. I'm sure on this platform, we are all aware that he's a person. Yeah. And then you hear, hey, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said, yeah. and the Holy Spirit, hey, who is the <laughs> Holy Spirit? <laughs> okay. Um, I think this is <laughs> one of the... Uh, um, interesting and um, very important topics that we have to uh, understand. Now, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, let me first say that I, I, I believe so much that as many of us that are here, we are not strange or to the concept that the, we serve a trying God, um, the Trinity. And yes, we mentioned God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the um, Holy Spirit. But the 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 understanding sometimes and the confusion sometimes is that we think there is a certain pecking order that you know um God the Father is first, you know, so the, the 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 Son is second, and then the Holy Spirit you know follows. So like he's the junior God among the Godhead. That that is not so. <laughs> so we should clear that first. But when we talk of the Holy Spirit, as we yes. would understand, he he is equal with the Father, with the Son. Mm. There, there is no competition amongst them. That is one of the understanding we should have. There is no competition among mm. them. So that as much as we will give a certain honor to the Father, that same honor must go to the Spirit and to the Son. Now, to... um. To talk about this Holy Spirit in John 15, let me begin from there. Is Jesus said that he will send us the Holy Spirit, but in defining him or in qualifying him, I think the 26, what he said is that he is that which proceeds from the Father, the Spirit that proceeds from the Father. Now, what is he trying to teach us? Now, God the Father, as we know, bodily is seated in heaven. Jesus is seated in heaven bodily. Now, we sometimes say that, oh, we feel the presence of God in a meeting or in an atmosphere and all that. What is that presence? That is the Holy Spirit. He communicates. So he says that he mm -hmm. proceeds from the Father. So the Father is seated here. Now, 
Mm -hmm. I remember, I, I like one definition the man of God gave. He said that Jesus, the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ unlimited. In that, when Jesus was here bodily, he was limited in terms of space. He could only be in one place at the same time. So now, the Holy Spirit, when God wants to manifest his presence in China, in Ghana, in South Africa, it has he doesn't have to get up and move there. He proceeds from himself through the agency of the Holy Spirit. So in our meeting right now, he is communicating the presence of God to us. That is the Holy Spirit. And then there is another meeting going on somewhere else. That same Holy Spirit is communicating the presence of God. So number one, we understand that the Holy Spirit is the career of the presence of God. He, he brings it into manifestation. That is the first thing we understand. Or let me say the second thing. The first thing is that he is part of the Godhead, as we understand, equal with the Father, yes. equal yes. with the Son. We have to sustain that. And then in his manifestation or expressions, he communicates. That is why Paul said what? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and what? The communion. That is the communication, the participation of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So it is the Holy Spirit that helps us to partake of everything that is in God, you know. So, so that, that is where we start from. But now let me connect it here to the subject of the mind of Christ in Easter. Yes. When you read First Peter, let me quickly yes. read yes. that to you. First Peter mm -hmm. chapter 1, in the verse 10, it says that of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. It said unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that preach the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent from heaven. Now, I was looking at this scripture a couple of weeks back. He says that he is the spirit of Christ. So as we are talking about the mind of Christ, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of Christ. He is like, as I said earlier, the person of Christ, you know, in an unlimited manner, expressing Christ to us, not in a visible form, but in an experience that happens in our own spirits. Mm -hmm. That is what the Holy Ghost does. Now, I always say this, most of us sometimes condemn the early believers and the people who were around in the days of Jesus, who did not believe that he was the Messiah and did not accept him to receive him. Now, and we think that if we were in their days, we would have received. Trust me, most of us, if not all of us, probably would have been the same mindset, difficult to receive that him. But when you look at it, it says, the scripture I read that, it said that the spirit of Christ revealed to the prophets, it says that the grace that is to come. Now, in this revelation, of the Messiah in the Old Testament to the prophets by the Spirit of Christ, it was so real to them. If you look at the context of the scripture, the revelation of Christ to them by the Holy Ghost was so real to them that they thought it was their time, that these things were going to happen. Until the Spirit of Christ again had to tell them that, no, these things are not for you, but it is for a people that are coming. So that gives us the first picture of what the Holy Ghost will do. He is the revelator of Christ. The Holy Ghost has one ministry, one most important ministry, to reveal Christ. So that even before he will come, in the Old Testament, he so revealed him, it was so vivid, it was so clear to the prophets that they believed it had to be their time. So, in the New Testament, that same ministry of the Holy Spirit continues. Jesus said that, he would take of mine and show it to you. Mm -hmm. That is the primary assignment of the Holy Spirit, to make Christ real. 
And so that is why you and I, who were not there when Jesus walked the earth physically, and yet we heard of the gospel. That's why in the verse 12, it says that, um, um, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost. So they preached the gospel with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost yeah. made the gospel real. We were not there over 2,000 years ago, but yes, the crucifixion, yes. the sacrifice of Christ is so real to us now that we believe it. We accept it. We understand it. And that is the foundation of our faith. Who did? Who has made it possible? It is the Holy Spirit. So talking about the Holy Spirit and Easter, the, the understanding that we have is that the whole story of salvation he has been involved. The Holy Spirit yes. has been involved right from the beginning. So what happened? He gave them this word of the coming Messiah. And this word became the prophetic word which the prophet spoke. And they kept declaring it. That was through the agency of the Holy Spirit. You see, because everything God would do, he speaks it first. And through the prophets, he kept speaking. He kept speaking. He kept speaking declaring the coming of the Christ. And then that word became flesh. That's why the Bible said that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Christ. So that word that was given of the Christ became the testimony of Christ, which through the spirit of prophecy by the prophets were being prophesied. And through those declarations over the ages, over the ages, time coming and passing, that word was being formed. And then that same word came to the Holy Spirit, came to Mary. And what did he say? He said that the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and that that holy thing, you know, will be the child of God. See, so it, right from the beginning, the formation of the plan of redemption, the coming of the Messiah, the Holy Ghost has been involved. And, and that is why he has the unique ministry of revealing Christ to us, making him real to us. See, so if you want to have any uh, um, profitable or fruitful relationship with God, it can only happen through that revelation of the Holy Spirit. You see, so, so that is what we understand from what Jesus was telling us here. So we first have to know, one, he is God. Number two, he has the unique mandate, the unique assignment to reveal Christ to us, to make him real to us. He confirms everything that, you know, has been said of the Christ. You see, and beyond that, what did he do? Even when the Messiah was born, the Bible says that how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed, for God was with him. So this same Holy Spirit, that, you know, through his ministry, the words were spoken ahead. That brought the conception. He also anointed Jesus Christ and was with him through his ministry. And then we understand also that it was through that same power of the Holy Spirit that the dead body of Christ was raised back to life. So you find that you cannot talk about Easter, the full account of Easter and the salvation and the plan of salvation and exclude the Holy Spirit. He has been the architect, you know, or, or let me say God the Father is the architect, but the Holy Ghost has been the implementer all along, all along. And it was his power. The Bible said that the exceeding Paul in Ephesians 1, in the conclusion, said that the exceeding greatness of his power towards us, is that which power he wrought in Christ when he raised him up from the dead, he was talking about that power of the Holy Ghost, which was exerted to bring Christ out of the dead. That same power of the Holy Spirit, you see, and it is through that same power. The Bible says that he, through the eternal spirit, I think in Hebrews chapter 4, said that through the eternal spirit, he offered himself. So Jesus couldn't have even made a better sacrifice without the Holy Spirit. He said that through the eternal spirit, he offered a more excellent sacrifice. So you realize that. This whole idea, although sometimes we teach that, you know, there was the time of the Father, the time of the Son, the time of the Holy Spirit. In all dispensations, the Holy Ghost has been at work. 
the Holy Ghost has been at work. And, 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 and he's so important in our day and our time. So then after that, so now Jesus is going from the scripture that, you know, our auntie from Puma read to us. He's now leaving. You see, when he was here, he was to them everything. Their comforter, their provider. He, he helped them. He healed them. Everything. Then he says that, I will not leave you comfortless. He says that I will pray the Father and he will send you another comforter. Another. Another. You see, you cannot say you are sending another when there have not been a precedent of the same kind. Yes. There must have been one of the same kind. So he said, I will send you another. And that another is telling us that what the Holy, what Jesus was to the disciples in their day, the Holy Spirit is to us now. He is to us now. So, so instead of us wishing, oh, that we were in the days of the prophets, the days of the fathers, the days of Christ, we have it better. Because Jesus himself said that it is better. It is expedient. It is far better for you that I go. Because if I do not go, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, will not come. Now, I want to read something. You know, the interesting bit about it is that I think I'm going on too much, but let me just summarize this aspect of it. No, Pastor Albert, please, please keep going. And then when you land, we'll take it from there. Please keep going. Please <laughs> flow. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, so when you, when you look at um, how he puts it, so like I was saying, so in, in, in three ways, we connect the Holy Spirit to the Easter experience and all. I said, number one, he has been there from the beginning. He brought that prophetic word by which it was being communicated through the prophets, speaking the word, which eventually became flesh. He was there at the conception. He anointed yeah. Jesus for the ministry. You know, and, and let me check something in here. Now, Jesus says something to the disciples. He says, As the Father has sent me, so sent I you. How did the Father send him? Yeah. John 10, 30, he said, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. That is how the Father sent him. The Father sent him anointed by the Holy Ghost. So if Jesus says that, mm -hmm. just as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Mm -hmm means that he is not sending us without the Holy Spirit. He is not sending us without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, it will not be just as the Father sent him. So that if the Father sent the Christ and he did not send him without the Holy Spirit, and then we, it, it then tells us that just as Jesus needed him, the Son of God, we even need him the more that we cannot fulfill any assignment, any ministry without the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, I was sharing something yesterday, was it three days ago, um, <laughs> on our First Impressions ministry platform. And I said something to them that Jesus said that the greatest is the one that saves. But as I was thinking about it, the Spirit of God said something to me that in this kingdom, even in the place of service, the greatest is not the one who serves by his own strength, but the greatest is the one who serves by the ability of the spirit. Mm. That is the greatest. The one who serves by the ability, by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And that is what Jesus said, that as the Father has sent me, so have I sent you. Yeah. So as many of us that have been called, as many of us that have been sent forth, we have not been sent without the Holy Spirit. We have not been sent without him. He is with us. That's why Jesus said that he will be with you. He will not, be, he will be with you forever, forever. He will remain with you forever. You know, and, and, and that is, that is so comforting, so reassuring that he, said he will be with you forever. He will not leave you. There, there's no caveat. He didn't say that if you do this, he will be with you. If you do that, he will be with you. No. He said that he will be with you forever. And it is up to us to have that consciousness, that awareness, that this Holy Ghost, this Holy Spirit, he is 
with us. See, so right from the, so that as the father sent him, and like I said, then he quickened the body of Christ, brought him up, and then by the spirit, he was, you know, raised, and then he ascended to heaven, where he yeah. is seated. I would say at the right hand of the father. Yeah. Let's look at something. Thank you, Jesus. So he, where he said that he will send you another comforter. Now, I will read it from the King James, the, the Amplified. You know, the Amplified does something. The word that is used there, the Amplified actually, um, uh, um, the word is, is the word comforter, that's parklet, is a compound word. And the Amplified, you know, breaks it down for us, helps us to appreciate what he's trying to say. So yeah. you find that in, in that word, it also means my Bible is acting up a bit. So so it says that one, the comforter. Yeah. Number two, it means intercessor. Yeah. Number three, it means advocate. Yeah. It means standby. That is the Holy Ghost. So it's it's it's, it's amazing that we have this personality of the spirit. So he says that, because if I do not go away, the comforter, that is number one. Then he said the counselor, number two. Then he says the helper. So you find that other versions will say, I'll say another helper. Then yes. he says the bucket. Then he says the intercessor. Then he says the, the strengthener, the standby. So that word is a sevenfold word that is compressed into comforter. Yeah. So when we talk of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised us, and of course, the coming of the Holy Spirit is a blessing of the finished work of Christ. So it is connected to Easter. Yes. It's yeah. a blessing. You know, it is part of the package, you know, we received from uh, in salvation, the Holy Spirit. And it says that he is number one counselor. Now, think about it. It means he instructs you. He okay, counsels... Robert, hold, hold on one second. Let's pause on counselor because okay. I want to ask you a question around that. But before we come to that, we highlight my, my network was misbehaving, but I trust that the Lord is in control. You know, the, the, first, the three things. The first thing mm -hmm. was that he's, um, from the start, he was there. He was part of the salvation plan, right? That's, and yeah. then you, you mentioned a second point, which I missed because of the network. Mm -hmm. And then the third. So can you just highlight those three and then let me ask my next question okay. based on that. All right. So I said, number one, he was there right from the beginning. Yes. In the, in the conception of the whole plan of salvation. And yes. he set it in motion with yes. a prophetic yes. word that the prophet yeah. was speaking. Then yeah. at the conception, mm -hmm. when you read in Luke chapter one, Mark and all that, it tells you, yeah. he told Mary that the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. All right. So it was the Holy Ghost actually that made the birth of Christ possibility. So number two, he actually brought the Messiah into okay. birth. That yeah. is the, the second part of, of his, his, his partaking in the salvation plan. Yeah. Then in that same salvation plan, number three, Jesus' ministry on earth, he empowered him to do it. He empowered him. So you find Jesus will always say that the father that lives in me, he does yes. the works. He was referring to the Holy Spirit. You see that? Because the father yes. has always been in He said, our father which art in heaven. It is the yes. Holy Spirit yes. that communicates that presence of the father to us. So Jesus is saying the father which is in me. So he empowered him for the work of the ministry. Yes. Then even the sacrifice, that, is, that will be the, the, the third thing, right? Um, yeah. that uh, or the fourth thing, let me say. So the first from the beginning, the word he gave, they spoke it, the conception, his ministry, and then the Bible said through the eternal spirit he offered himself. So again, that is the sacrifice of Christ was made yeah. acceptable through yeah. the work of the yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. That is that, that, that another aspect of it. Then the yeah. next thing that maybe the fifth thing is that he actually brought Christ back to life yeah he resurrected christ yeah so that is the ministry of the holy spirit as we see in the salvation plan yeah. yes so, so on that one so how i would um i captured it is that 
the third one, when he said he empowered him, you know, yes. and enabling him to do what he came to do, raising him from the dead, and he going up, is all captured in empowerment, I believe. So That's it's right. a three. Then yeah. we began a conversation on him as a counselor. And I want mm -hmm. us to please, by, by, by the message of God, God help us, to talk about it um, in relation to our everyday lives. Because um, in this session, the Lord wants us to see that what he presents to us in his word is not detached from what we do every day. So as you're talking mm -hmm. about the counselor, okay. Okay. can you please relate it to our everyday life? So me, I wake up in the morning, he's a counselor. So what does it mean for me going up and down? If you can kindly tie those two in. And then the various things that he is a sevenfold ministry, as we talk about it, if you can tie it into our everyday lives, that would be superb. Thank Great. you. Let me start with the counselor. I have an, an experience in a, a very, um, um, an experience that would drive it home for, for us. So um, when I completed secondary school, I was not very sure which school to go and all that. And my parents were not willing to buy all the forms, you know, <laughs> that were available to be purchased. So I needed to be sure which way to go. And so I decided to pray, get into prayer. And um, I, I had moved to a crowd to be with a friend uh, who later became my brother-in-law. So all I did every day was to pray when he leaves for work. And I kept praying and praying and praying and praying, just, you know, trusting God to, to give me a clear uh, um, direction of what to do. In that place of prayer, one time as I was praying, I had an impression in my spirit of a place. Mm -hmm. So my brother-in-law came home and I said, oh, as I was praying, this is what I saw. I had this impression, not like a vision, but it just registered in my spirit. And I started mm -hmm. telling him what I felt. And then he was like, that is Legon Campus. You somehow picked up in your spirit. So I knew exactly what I ought to do. I knew exactly what I ought to do. So I bought just that form. Those times to get into the business school was quite difficult. You know, so oh. people were like, but if you don't get it, then you don't get to go to any other school and all that. But I had this peace in my heart that that was the way that Lord was leading me to go. And thank God, I got it. Now, as a counselor, he is there to help us in making the decisions and the choices of life. But as a counselor, he doesn't impose his mind on us. He helps us to know what is the way to go. What is the way to turn? You see, he the Bible calls him the spirit of wisdom. He knows all things. And that is why, you see, one of the things that, uh, Auntie from Poma, we need to learn is this. Everything that we have in Christ, and particularly even in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, is not automatically yes. communicated. Number one, we have to acknowledge it. Acknowledge mm -hmm. it. You mm -hmm. see, that he is with you as your counselor. You have to mm -hmm. acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Philemon 1.6 says that, that the participation of your faith will be effectual by the yeah. acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you in Christ. Now, the Holy Ghost in you is a good thing. But he's saying yes. that, you partaking of his ministry and his blessing will only be effectual when you acknowledge it. So number one is to acknowledge him in your life as your counselor, acknowledge him as such. So it, not in the one, like the, the, the routine things, let me put it that way. So, but, but even in that, when you wake up every morning, every day, you have a consciousness of him. I think that is where we miss it. That we don't yeah. have a consciousness of the holy spirit you see sometimes we think it is only when we are in church that he is there no he is yeah. always there with us and yeah. and he speaks to us i've mm -hmm. learned recently in the hard way that that small voice that you hear sometimes that is trying to nudge you in a certain way it is the holy spirit talking and yeah. and sometimes after I take the step I was being led not to take, immediately I know I missed it. Yes, yes. I just know that yeah. I missed it. Yeah. And it was the Holy Spirit that was trying to tell me, don't do this. Yeah. And, and, and so I've, I've come to a place where 
I'm learning to discern the voice of the spirit the more. How? By judging it. How do you yeah. judge it? One, yeah. that, look, certain things that comes up in your spirit to do, if, if it is right to do, judge it this way. Satan will not, as it were, instruct you to do something that is good. Yes. Yeah. Number two, yes, yourself will usually be selfish and will not direct you to do certain things that are uncomfortable. Yeah. When you find certain things coming up in your spirit, a sense to do certain things, and you judge it in this way, take a step of faith. And that is another thing, that we receive of his counsel by faith. See, you 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 you, you cannot walk with him without faith. So yeah. to drive it as a counselor, it means he speaks to us. He's always yeah. speaking. He's always instructed, and particularly through the word, he's always mm -hmm. instructed. I remember I was sharing with um, Pastor Lina, and I think Sister mm -hmm. from my last time that there was something that happened, and I reacted in a certain way. Yeah. Just that moment, the following day or so, I was reading a particular scripture, and when the Holy Ghost started teaching me the essence of that scripture, I knew that if I had read that scripture a day before, my reaction would have been different. Would have been different, yeah. One yeah. of the simplest ways he counsels us is through the word of God. Yeah. So when you ever find yourself, you are studying the word, you are hearing, the, you are reading the Bible, open yourself to the counsel of the spirit. Yeah. Open yourself. He will bring a word up in your spirit. And yeah. as you position yourself, especially to obey, to do what he is telling you to do, you will find that you will learn the more to discern his voice. Yeah. Then the more. So, yeah. so, so, and, and, and to push it a bit further, sometimes when you are struggling to know, get to a place of prayer, particularly speaking in tongues. Yeah. For me, it is, I mean, for the major things, let me put it that way that you're trying to decide. You are asking, should I marry this person? Should, should I move to this place? Should I take this job? You know, these things you need to engage in. How do you engage in? You see, the truth of the matter is this. The, your spirit man is mingled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So your spirit man has all wisdom. You see, but it is not made readily available to your mind. The only way you bring it, you draw it out of your spirit into your mind to, to receive it is to draw it out through the agency of the Holy Ghost by praying in tongues. So what do you do? Get into a place of prayer. Speak in tongues, speak in tongues, speak in tongues, speak in tongues. Whatever the decision is, have it, you know, on, on your mind. Speak in tongues. You will find that as yeah. you're doing that and your spirit man is being stirred up, he will pick that mind of Christ concerning the matter and he will reveal it. Yes. That's what Jesus said. He said that he will take what is mine, what is in my mind, he will take it and he will make it known to you. Let me give you an example. Yes. A man of God that I think I've shared with Christmas, yeah. our was planning to take a loan, millions of dollars, mm -hmm. construct a facility, a, a Bible school. And he said mm -hmm. that the, the bank has been denying his application, go and come, go and come. Then the Spirit of God, like it registered in him that, why are you not praying about this? So he yeah. spent like three days speaking in tongues. Yeah. Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. And on the last day, the Spirit of God instructed him on what to do. He said, write letters to your partners. And to the glory of God, that school has been built without a single cent in debt. Oh, if he yeah. had learned to draw that wisdom, that counsel yes. of the Holy Spirit in the place of prayer, he would have you know, encumbered the entire ministry with so much debt. And sometimes yeah. that is how we do things as well. We get ahead yeah. without yeah. seeking patiently and waiting for him to speak. So what I say yeah. is that in the matters that can wait, wait and yeah. seek him. In the place, particularly speaking in tongues, that wisdom will yeah. come up. You will pick it. Yeah. You will know. But then in the day-to-day -day things, he prompts us. I always say that he's not a very complicated person. He, he's very clear in his communication. Look at the yes. instruction to Philip. Philip, join yourself to the chariot. That is all. Not very complex yeah. instruction. And very same, simple. Very simple. Maybe yes. you wake up, go to the office, and it tells you, pray. 
That is it. That is it's as simple as that. That is the counsel of God to you in that moment that you should pray. Say, oh, stop. Call this person. These yes. instructions they are the counsel of the Holy Spirit instructing us what to do, the steps to take. And like I said, we receive it in faith. And this is what I want to add that to wrap that part up. Never be afraid to obey or to do it. Yeah. Never have the fear that what if it is not him? What if it is yeah. not him? No. Rather, out of faith, know that he is the one. And the more you learn to listen, and, and I always say that particularly in the simple things, in the simple, simple things, oh, you wake up, oh, then there's a thought, fast today. That is the counsel of God. That is the counsel of God. Take it, run with it. The more you do these things, you see, because the truth of the matter is that this principle that Jesus said that he that is faithful in little will be faithful in much, it holds across board. If you are yeah. not faithful, the simple instructions on the counsel he gives you, you will not be faithful in the bigger counsel. He and if yes. you learn, he said that I wisdom, I lead in the way of righteousness. See mm -hmm. that what? That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. He said, and then yes. I will fill their bounds. That is the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel. He counsels us with the mind and the wisdom of God. And he said, he will lead you in the way of righteousness. That means he will lead you to do right. And then yes. beyond that, he said that I will cause you to inherit substance and I will yes. fill your bands. Yes. This is something that the Holy Thank Spirit put in my time that yes. you will learn to no. <laughs> Yeah, Pastor, will... please, please round up on that and let me ask you another question. Sorry, please my internet um, is breaking. So sorry if I'm chipping in when I shouldn't be. But I'm so trusting the Lord that this conversation will happen to his glory. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, Pastor, no, but as you were sharing on, on how we know when he is casting us and that he does not impose and then we must acknowledge him. You know, he just painted yeah. the picture of, let's say I know, I know Pastor Adline and, and, yeah. oh, Pastor Adline, oh, she, she, she really knows the word. And I mm -hmm. know her and I never go to her to ask her about the word or anything. As soon as her name is mentioned, oh, I know her very well. But if I'm not going to her to tap into what the Lord has blessed her with, how yeah. then can I exactly. benefit? So if I do acknowledge that exactly, so that's the picture that was painted. You know, yeah. and then you said we should judge it, of course, by the word. And yeah. it, and is it right? Is it comfortable? Would it would it do right? Because the enemy would not advise you to do something that would be right. You know, and yeah. it make, reminds me of uh, Philippians four eight on what the Lord asked us to focus on, and mm -hmm. it just makes me somehow see that what the Holy Spirit counsels us on, you know, it borders around what is pure, what is lovely, what is commendable. He's not going to say, go and pick a fight with Pastor Norbert, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And, right. and it reminds me of the time when I began to say, Holy Spirit, um, help me hear you. And then I was mm. coming home and he said, stop and buy some granites. You know, so my husband likes granites. And I was yeah. thinking, ah, but granites, was it part of the Holy Spirit business? Mm -hmm. So I stopped. <laughs> and then when I bought it and I, and I was saying, oh, but we have granites at home. So when I bought it and I got home, I realized that there really was none. And though he didn't use it that day, the next the day he asked, if I hadn't bought it, you know, mm -hmm. he wouldn't have had any to use. And that yeah. brought about some kind of, you know, he felt cared about. So yeah. I'm just linking it to what you said, that whatever yeah. he advises us to do, it brings, mm -hmm. it brings love, you know, it brings unity, it brings bo uh, bonding and all the things of God. So thank yeah. you for making that really clear. Um, but Pastor, no, but I have, I have a question that sure. I don't know if we can finish answering today. But I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't speak in tongues. How yeah. then can I benefit from the counsel of the Holy Spirit? We are still as counselors. This, this one is part one. And two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How can I benefit okay. from the counsel? Because I don't speak in tongues. What do I do? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So like mm. I said, you said that, uh, let me just read that scripture to you. Uh, you said that, just a second. So that is Proverbs chapter 8. Now, okay. it says that I lead in the way of righteousness. Mm. In the midst, it says that in the midst of the path of judgment. Now, let, let, pay, pay close attention here. He said, I lead in the way of righteousness. That is number mm. one. Like Auntie from Palmer was sharing, the Holy Spirit will not lead you to do anything that is unrighteous. Mm. 
that is evil, so to say. So he said, I lead, first of all, in the way that is right. And the way that is right is not as in right before men, so to say, but the way that is right before God. Then he says mm. that it's of the paths of judgment. Now, that is also important. Judgment is the ability to decipher, all right, to tell right from wrong and all that. Say so that I lead in the midst of the path of judgment. Mm -hmm. Then it says that, that I may cause those who love me to inherit Satan and I'll fill their treasures. So that the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways before his works of old. This is the Holy Spirit we're talking about here. So he said, number one, he lives in the way of righteousness and in judgment. Now, one of the things that helps us, even if you don't speak in tongues, is that ability to judge. That is why the Bible says that, you know, strong meat is for those who are of age, who by reason of use have learned to decipher between good and evil, what is right and what is not. So, through the word of God, the word of God is the wisdom of God, okay? The word of God is the wisdom of God. So when you don't speak in tongues, still the Holy Spirit can illuminate you through the word. You see, and that is why one of the things I always say that there is the studying of the word and there's the reading of the word. Both are important. If you don't have the time to study as you ought to, read, read, read. The more you read, mm -hmm. you see, how the word is being piled up in you. And in times where you need it, the Holy Ghost will illuminate it for you to know what to do. So when you don't yes. speak in tongues, give yourself to the word, give in prayer and the word and, and, and judgment. You can only judge right by the scriptures. Any judgment that is mm. not regulated by the scriptures can only be selfish, can only be sensual, can only be evil. So if you want right judgment, it has to be regulated by the word. And that comes when you have learned to give yourself to the word. So that when the time comes, you find that scripture will pop up in your spirit. You, you, a word will come to you. Or the Holy Ghost will just highlight a word to you. you know, and you will know it. You will know it. So, so in as much as the speaking in tongues helps, in, when you don't have that, fine, stick to the word. Let the word be like be rich in you. And when you need it, you find that the Holy Ghost will bring it up, up, up in your spirit. I, I've, sometimes, let me share this. I, I've had instances where I speak to people a lot, my friends, and sometimes, you know, when they have challenges, some of them are ahead of me in terms of marriage and other things. But they bring things to me. And one of the things I have learned is that um, the word of God is always the answer. And so I'm able to draw from the word of God mm -hmm. to give counsel. Yeah. I'm able to draw from, from the, the understanding of the word of God I have and to, to as it were, bring light to the situation and it always yeah. helps them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is what I'm trying to say here, that when you allow the word of God to really settle in you, it produces wisdom. Mm -hmm. That wisdom becomes mm -hmm. possible. And you learn to judge yeah. right by the word. When these things are working in your, in your life, particularly judgment, and how do you judge? Judge according to the scriptures. And if you don't have the scriptures, how are you going to judge them? If you don't have the word, how are you going to judge? And so that is how the Holy Ghost will lead us. Even when we are not in that yeah. place of speaking to us and all that. Uh, so I know there is also the aspect of like talking to other people and all that. But you will not always have people you will not always have people, you know. So when there is that opportunity as well, you draw from the wisdom of people you trust that have the mind of God, right? But aside that, when it is just you and, and, and by yourself, you still need to draw from that wisdom. And it is always the, the spirit of the word that will be let up for you. Then you know that this is the way to go. This is what to do. Yeah, so... I don't know if that's... <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes, that, that really, really takes care of that question. And I know the Lord is teaching us. You know, you answered my next question. I was going to mm -hmm. ask, so what about the gifts of people? But you touched on that already. 
because yeah. sometimes you know we find some of us believers wanting to talk to the person who can see you know mm. the, the figure of <laughs> the body yeah. of the human being yeah. we want to talk to that person and that also comes in so thank you for touching on that so my dear sisters and brothers who are listening now and later when you speak in tongues you have a case in there if you don't speak yeah. in tongues to the lord in his mercy did not leave you out you also have a way of hearing from the holy spirit by the way and it was proverbs 8 i, I don't think we caught the verse proverbs, proverbs 8, 8 20 20. Proverbs 8 20. okay yes, thank you yeah. all right so that we can highlight that as part of the scriptures that we are taking home for today and so no matter where you are on your journey the lord has a way or the, the Holy Spirit ministers to you. And so we, we don't have an excuse. We, we really don't. So, um, Pastor Nobet, so now we've learned about how he's with us and we cannot have Jesus without the Holy Spirit. It's like, it's not even possible. And I like how you started the conversation that there's no picking order. They are mm -hmm. one. They are mm -hmm. one. So we've talked about how it works, um, how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. We've talked about the council. You are going mm -hmm. to talk about the other aspects um in the yeah. amplified version but we have <laughs> run out of time yeah. <laughs> we have yeah. run out of time so yeah. I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to please make time for us to pick up this conversation uh, and then yes. um, bring it to a close because now if you didn't know you know you can't have yeah. jesus and say holy spirit dear i don't believe it it, it doesn't work that way there's no separation mm -hmm. so yeah. now if you didn't know you know and if you had forgotten to the lord has reminded you so that is what we know that we are going home with. Because we are running out of time, Pastor Norbert, what would you tell us to round up the session in mm -hmm. terms of um, how we feel, mm -hmm. how we should separate our feeling mm -hmm. from the counsel of the Holy Spirit? We know that the counsel of the Holy Spirit must align with the word of God. But mm -hmm. how we feel sometimes gets in the way. And That's feelings right. are not entirely a bad thing. I'm sure you agree. They could be a signal of, of something, right? Yeah, so yeah. how do we separate those two so that they don't mix and you know create some mm -hmm. mechy thing for us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, like I mentioned briefly that the walk with God and with the Holy Spirit, we do it in faith. Okay. Now, um, look at when the Israelites... You see, let, but let me check this in. I know our time is gone. You see, everything that God will do, you will find that what underpins it really is the counsel, the wisdom of God. Now, the, the Israelites are at the Red Sea. The, there is no natural wisdom that would help them to cross the Red Sea. It had to be a spiritual wisdom of what mm. to do. And what was it? Lift up your hand, stretch the rod, divide the water. You can't explain it in any other way. In that moment, yeah. the people didn't feel like going forward. No, but the word of God had come to them. So you come to Hebrews chapter 11, and it says that through faith, the children of Israel went through the Red Sea as though it was dry ground which the Egyptians are mm. saying to do same, they were drowned. So mm. you realize that when that instruction, that counsel of God came to the people of old, in as much as their circumstances did not align to it, they had to step out in faith, in faith. And, and, and that is what I would say that it is not by feelings, but it is by faith. Yes. It is not by feelings, but it's by faith. You see, mm -hmm. so you feeling all excited about the instruction, about the direction, about the counsel that the Holy Ghost is bringing to you, or the Word of God is bringing to you. But how do you do it? By faith. You see, believing that He knows all things. That is number one. Believing yes. that He has your best interest at heart. Number two. You see, the thing is that sometimes we think we know better. We love ourselves more. But trust me, the Holy Ghost loves you more than you can ever love yourself. So that if even if it's uncomfortable, you know that in his great love for you, he is leading you in that way to bring you glory. And so you step out in faith. In faith. 
That is what I want to say. That you see, if it, because the feelings may always be there. And like I always say, for example, in meetings, we say, oh, um, somebody go for a meeting. So uh, I, I didn't feel like God was in the place. No, we we don't experience God by feelings. You see, we experience God by his truth. So we come together. We, we can't even pray this prayer anymore. I always say this. If you have an understanding that Father, um, come, come and be with us. And no, where is he coming from? He is in you. He is in me. Right? And he said that where two or more are guarded. So the right prayer is that, Father, we are guarded in your name. Thank you that you are here with us. You see, so that is, so whether you feel it or not, it's, it's inconsequential. It is the truth of his word that we base on and then we act. You see, so you may not be feeling particularly excited to, to call somebody, to be kind to somebody, to do what, but the thing is that out of faith, faith, you see, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Interestingly, you see God. Faith without faithfulness or without love, he said that the only way we please God and the whole agenda of the counsel and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit is that we will please God. That's the whole agenda. The only why he's leading us is that we will not go our own way, but we will go the way of the Lord. And how do you go the way of the Lord? By faith. By faith. So number one, as we said about acknowledgement, believe. Believe. You see, and one of the things, like as we're talking about the mind of Christ, like, is that it should be part of your confession. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind yeah. of Christ. Let, mm -hmm. let it be your part, part of your confession. So when something comes up to you, once you know you have the mind of Christ and it's guiding you, you walk in it by faith. And that is how you are going to do it because yeah. trust me, even, even prayer, sometimes the Holy Ghost is leading you to pray. You don't feel like it. <laughs> you know, you don't feel like it. He's leading yeah. you to yeah. pray. You don't feel like it. Yeah. But because you know is the spirit and he wants to do something with that obedience of yours, you get up and then you begin to act in faith. To wrap it up here, the truth of the matter is that our work as believers, is in partnership with the Holy Spirit. And if time next time we talk about the next one, the helper, you see, a helper does not do it without yes. you. A helper does not, he doesn't do it without you. Yeah. It is when you are in step, you are moving, you are taking an yes. action, and he helps. And that is what the Christian life is meant to be. Through the help and the partnership of the Holy Spirit. But because he is not physical, the only way we relate with him is by faith. So what I want to say is that put your faith above your feelings. All right? Put your faith above your feelings. If you don't feel like it, say to yourself, I'm stepping out in faith. I'm doing this thing. It. You see, and, and, and no seed of faith will go and not return with the harvest. Trust me. Every seed yeah. of faith, every seed of faith yeah. is to deliver a result. He said that through yes. that, the others obtain a, 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 a good report. So once you step mm. out in that faith, mm. trust me, you would definitely have a good report. You know, and, and I don't know how to lay it out, but if there is anything to take home or to take with us, is that the Holy Spirit was given to us for us to help us in this work of faith don't ignore him if we have ever ignored him we should repent of it and begin to acknowledge him in our work there was a time i i i, I the lord was i feel like i had a desire to know the word and then i started praying consistently every day i get home i go on my knees and Father, open my eyes, Spirit of God, enlighten me. I kept praying that prayer for like three months, in, like every day. And then suddenly, I realized that my understanding of the scriptures were just opened. It was just opened. And then now the scriptures, when I take the scriptures, I begin to see certain things. I begin to see, that is the Holy Spirit. 
And the thing about him is that if you don't engage him, if you don't learn to engage him, he's a very gentle man. He doesn't force himself into our situation. If you allow him and you acknowledge him in your space by faith, you will find that you will accidentally please God than you intentionally <laughs> trying to please God. I like that. <laughs> May oh, we man. all accidentally please God. Oh, I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's no, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, that was yeah. special. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Sisters, I know that we, we've all been blessed by, by this evening sharing. And, you know, as, as Pastor Norbert continue to share something, a question that I heard um, on marriage school yesterday. And as the Lord has brought it up to me, I know that either that sister is here or somebody's here who can tell the sister. The, the question or the comment was, I don't feel like submitting to my husband. So shall I submit? And today, Pastor Norbert, the Lord has used him to tell us that it's not about whether you feel like submitting. It is what you should do because it is the counsel of the Holy Spirit because one, he's all-knowing. He has your best interest at heart, at heart more than your husband does. And he loves you more than you love yourself. And also... He's, you know, he's the way, he leads us the way of the Lord. He doesn't lead us away from how the Lord wants to lead mm -hmm. us. And that is the way of righteousness, not the way of sin. And, you know, when he said faith always yields a good report, I said, ah, uh, no wonder we are told in the word that faith equals righteousness. You know, my faith will count as righteousness because if it always That's yields right. a good report. And, and mm -hmm. so, sister, I know you are either listening or will listen later. This is for you from our father, even if you don't feel like do it because the one who is guiding you to do it knows what's best for you. So that was a sidebar. Now let's come back to uh, this question. <laughs> but the Novet, before we leave this session, I'd ask you to um, please pray with us. I know there are some of us who have disobeyed the Holy Spirit, sometimes accidentally too, sometimes on purpose. We haven't acknowledged him. We want to leave this very um, session, have they repented of that so that as we, we get out of here, we will begin to renew, as it were, our relationship with the Holy Good Spirit name. by acknowledging him. So please yeah. pray with us and then we'll share the grace. Right. And thank you. All right. Oh, thank you so much. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for such a blessing to come together. We give you praise for the things that you have helped us to receive and to understand. Tonight, we repent from that stance that we have held, that place we have been, where we have not given the due recognition to your spirit. He said he is the spirit of truth. And so, Father, tonight, we ask you to have mercy on us. For the times that we have ignored you, Holy Spirit, forgive us. For the times that we have not listened to your guidance, to your instructions, and to your counsel, Father, forgive us. Oh, yes, Lord, forgive us, forgive us. Show us mercy tonight. For tonight, we reposition ourselves to be the ones who hear and obey, to be the ones who walk in step with your spirit. And so, Father, tonight, as we renew our mind in this subject, we invite your spirit once again, oh, yes, to aid us in this work of faith. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, right now, rekindle, renew that communion, renew it, oh God, in that place of prayer, in the place of the word. Let this fellowship of the Holy Spirit be renewed in us. In the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. oh yes, Lord, you are, you are the comfort of the Bible. It says right now, mm -hmm. as many as, as feel like far removed from your love, mm -hmm. Your love be communicated unto them again. In the name of Jesus, yes, mm -hmm. as many that, that feel so far from the Lord, may they experience that nearness of God through this ministry of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, from today, Lord, as we acknowledge you, as we acknowledge you, as we acknowledge you, Father, oh yes, let that voice be clear to us. In the name of Jesus, in every way, in every area, May we hear you clearly. May we know your voice clearly in the name of Jesus. And may we be, be in readiness to obey and to do 
that which you are instructing us to do. Father, we thank you. Yes, even from tonight, those who used to have visions and dreams, let them be restored in the name of Jesus. I just feel like there's some of you, 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 you used to have this connection in your dreams. You, you, you wake up and you know it is God speaking to you. And for some time now, now it's like it's not there listen he's closer than you ever thought he's right there he's right there you know so as you go to bed tonight all you want to say is that holy spirit thank you that you never left me i welcome your ministry once again into my life father restore any form any way any means that this fellowship of yours has been with any of us father let it be restored in the name of jesus christ May we see the visions again. May we have the impressions again. In the name of Jesus, may we hear again. Yes, Lord, may we dream again. May we understand again. In the name of Jesus. Oh, for somebody that has been your heart cry, that the word of God will come alive to you. May that grace fall upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the spirit of God illuminate your heart, your mind, Illuminate your understanding. May the scriptures come alive to you in the name of Jesus Christ from today. Oh, may your love for the word increase. And may the spirit of God help you to understand more and more and more the mysteries of Christ in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. And as I'm just praying, I just sense like Sister uh, Futoma was sharing earlier, that feeling thing. For somebody, you see, you have this thing that you have grieved the Holy Spirit. Listen, the Bible says that the gift and the callings of God are without repentance. It means that when God gives, he doesn't take it back. I want to encourage you. The Holy Ghost never left you. No. You allowed guilt and condemnation to sever that relationship. But he's there. He's there. All you need to do is to say, Spirit of God. I welcome you back and receive him by faith. Don't condemn yourself. Don't allow yourself to be accused. Don't accuse yourself either. The gifts and callings of God are sure. They are forever. Father, thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have turned around that we will obey. Even as our disobedience has been forgiven. Father, thank you that we will continue to hear you. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, let me just Amen. take this. I just felt like, Auntie from Poma, that we all have ways by which we create a certain atmosphere for the Spirit of God to you know, move in our lives. For some of us, it's worship. For some of us, it's prayer. I mean, for some of us, it's just lifting our hands. Like, we should cultivate these things. You know, that's one of the things I felt like. We all, uh, the Spirit of God and how he will move in our lives is not, are not the same. Uh, so learn to know what makes it real to you and, 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 and strengthen it, cultivate it the more. But one thing I really need to stri strike on is that the Holy Ghost, Jesus didn't give us a caveat. He said he will be with you forever, no matter what. Mm -hmm. He said he will be with you forever. He said that even though I give you the bread of adversity and all that, he said that what? He said that, but yet your counselor will not be far removed from you. So the Holy Ghost will never be far removed from us. He's always close. So just acknowledge him. Don't let anything, like, like even if you made a mistake, just say, Lord, I repent. Forgive me. Connect back to the Holy Spirit. He, 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 he doesn't drag things out. He forgives instantly and he restores quickly. So don't ever be disconnected. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Norbert. God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, sister, just give me a minute. I have a message. Let me make sure that it's not for all of us. If it's not, then... Yes, Professor Norbert, everybody said you have to come again. It's not me. <laughs> uh, 
so you put my request aside. Everybody say you have to come again. <laughs> so as as I and I, it's everybody. Yeah, that is yeah. that is that so is all right. We'll talk about that. Okay, so yes, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, so, and um, for those who have never listened to any of our sessions here on the Mind of Christ, sisters, this sisters and brothers, this session the Lord uses is to take off the limitations and to empower us to walk in the place where He has ordained for us to walk. So, please, as any time we come here, come with the heart of wanting to take up limitations to walk in the power that the lord has ordained for us to walk in and you know it he here when, when he brings us here he doesn't want us to come here like his presence everywhere and leave the same so please come with that kind of open heart to receive from him thank you so much for coming and i trust that next week we'll be here again to learn more and to hear more please let us all go knowing that indeed we have the mind of christ we are empowered like this. We are gifted like this. God is good. Let us share the grace and then we'll part company and we'll see you next week. Please unmute and share the grace with me. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Amen.